Welcome to an all new episode of SJHL Insider. Of course, we are right in the middle of the SJHL playoffs presented by UPL. And the second round is well underway. Of course, we'll recap game three and four, which took place Tuesday and Wednesday in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. Half of the SJHL final is complete. But more importantly, before uh, we get going on the show today, today marks. Um, of course, the anniversary of the Humboldt Broncos tragedy, and uh, it's always a tough day for everybody involved uh, in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, even in just across the province. Um, and of course, our, our deepest thoughts, prayers, um, warmest regards for the families, friends of the 2018 Humboldt Broncos. If you are in the Humboldt area today, uh, there is a tribute taking place at the Elgar Peterson Arena. Uh, which begins at 4.45 today. Uh, so if you are in the area and you want to pay uh, your respects, uh, you can do so at the Elgar Peterson Arena at 4.45 um, today. It's, uh, like I said, it's always a very tough day here in the SJHL. And really just, I, th I think, across uh, the country uh, since the accident happened. So, of course, uh, again, our deepest thoughts and prayers um, are with the families, friends, and and um, the humble Broncos organization. Obviously, it's a very tough day, a very tough day. Um, but anyways, we'll bring in uh, our co-host Clark Monroe. Clark, uh, we have lots to get into after uh, two two weird days. I would say when it yeah. comes to when it comes to games in the SJHL uh, and the two second round series. Uh, let's start with the one which actually came to an end last night. Yep. And that was uh, the Melford Mustangs and the Balfour North Stars, games three and four. I mean, game three. I'll, I'll say this uh, as we start kind of, uh, we break down these uh, two series and these last two games for both series. Um, game three between Melford and Battleford was one of the best hockey games I've seen all year. And it was a one nothing score. Yeah, one it, goal. It was outstanding. Yeah. Um both goaltenders were incredible. Uh, I thought both teams played fast and quick. And honestly, I, I really thought the Melford Mustangs were going to uh, pull it off. I mean, they had a couple of power play opportunities in uh, the first overtime. But you know what? We talked about Battleford's penalty kill at the start of the playoffs and how they got off to such a cold start. But boy, oh boy, they've turned it around and they've... Uh, they turned it around at the right time because they stopped a red hot Melford Mustangs power play. And then, of course, Kean Bell scores the overtime winner. But uh, and then last night, three goals in the first period for the Stars. Uh, not a great second. Melford scores two, but you know, good teams find a way to win, and they held on in the third period. I guess uh, overall, when you look at those two games between the two teams, what do you think? Yeah, I was able to tune in to uh, a bunch of that game three, uh, the one that went to mm -hmm. double overtime, and it, it was so tight. Like It seemed like every inch was being fought for so it hard was, by yeah. both teams. 100%. Um, and you look at the shots, too, for that night. I mean, 40-plus shots for each team, but that's spread over five, well, four and a half periods. Um, so, like, you think change, about yeah. that, like, shots were at a pre Premium, even though there were 40 plus like that I know that's a big number for a normal night but mm -hmm. when you t when you consider all of that it, it seemed like even shots were at a premium sure. they were battling hard it was a it was a great game um, and then of course who who else but key and bell to end that one in double overtime right um, but then the next night I mean I watched uh, your interview with with head coach Braden Klamasco after the game and um, that grin that he got when you said the second period you know it wasn't you know he got a bit of a grin he's like yeah it wasn't pretty um, um, but they were able to, you know, put that behind them in the third and come out right. with a really strong third period. Um, again, who else but Key and Bell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and both of, of Bell's goals, the game winner in uh, game three, and then, of course, that insurance, that yep. crucial insurance marker with like two minutes left in game four. Costly turnovers. Mm -hmm. Costly turnovers by the Melford. Like uh, the un unfortunate turnovers by the Melford Mustangs, too. And that's the last guy you want to. Um, you really, know, anybody on the ice at that time. Cost the puck over <laughs> to, and, yeah. um, you know, more times than not, Kian Bell's going to make you pay for sure. Um, I think, for me, um, the one thing that stood out about last night's game, being in attendance for last night's game, um, I thought the momentum turn in that hockey game, especially early on, 
was when the Melford Mustangs couldn't score on a five-minute power play. Mm. And again, that comes back to the penalty kill kind of for Battleford. Uh, really adjusting and doing a really good job, especially in these last two games of, of this series, because there were definitely times in game three where Melfort had opportunities on the man advantage, and especially in overtime. Mm -hmm. And then you have a five minute in the first period, you have a five minute power play to, you know, get off on the right foot. And unfortunately for the Mustangs and the fans of the Northern Lights Palace, they couldn't find the back of the net. And that kind of gave some momentum to uh, the stars and, Obviously, they scored three goals in the first period. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because when it, when you're talking about a five-minute power play, you think, yeah. what a massive advantage. But at the same time, like you said, uh, if you aren't able to score on a five-minute, man, is that a turning point in any game. Momentum, yeah. Uh, it's massive. Um, you know, there's been time and time again where I've been watching a game or I've been part of a game uh, working sure. with teams where, you know, that five-minute power play doesn't happen or your team is able to kill it off and, man, does it change everything. Yeah, and just some background, too. It was it was one nothing for Battleford, and then that's when... Uh, Easton Rast took a five-minute uh, major for charging. And as a result, Melford got a five-minute power play. Great chance to tie the game, maybe take the lead. Um, and they couldn't, they couldn't find the back of the net. And then what ends up happening is uh, Melford takes a penalty near the end of the, uh, the, the five-minute major. And it's the Balfour North Stars taking advantage of their brief man advantage. Right. And making it two nothing, and then yeah. they build off that, and they get uh, then a goal in the final minutes, and it, it's crazy how the momentum swings in the playoffs sometimes. Oh, absolutely! And every every little um, every little ounce of of momentum, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. energy, um, anything like that that you can pull from the other team at any moment in any game in the playoffs, especially at this time when all the teams left are so good. Mm -hmm. um, that is literally, and we saw it in the result, but that is literally the difference. Um, it's that inch. It's that ounce of momentum or energy. It's that, that game changing little turnover. Like you said, those are the differences in these games because the margin of error is so slim and at this point and it's time of the year. Yeah. And I think this, you know, even talking with, um, both uh, Brayden Klamosko and, and Gary Childerhos after the game is, you know, yes, it was a 4 nothing sweep, but three of those four games, they said that it was a battle. It was, an ex it was a battle, and it, it definitely wasn't a series. And even the two games I was at, games three and four, you know, they were – Melford and Balford were right there. I mean, in my opinion, I thought, I thought Melford was the better team in game three. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, just – they just couldn't beat Josh Cote. And I mean, Josh yeah. Cote, when you think about it, quietly, quietly in this series, he only allowed five goals in four games. Well, yeah, I mean that. And like you said, how, how close it was. It was a 3-2 game until a minute sure. and a half left in the game. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in game f in game four, I mean, it's just like, you know, th th we talked about this before the series started, how how Melfort was, if there was going to be a team out there that could maybe, you know, put some fear into Battlefords at this time of the year, Melfort was sure. a great candidate for that. And they did. I mean, I really think that they did. And um, I think if you ask, like you said, you ask the coaches, I'm sure any of the players yeah. on that team, they would not they would not say that... For, it wasn't a, It didn't feel like a sweep no, to me, even no. though it was. And I'm sure that they would all agree. And I think the one thing that really helped Melford, especially in games three and four, when the the two I thought those were the two closest games of the series, um, was the home ice definitely helped getting that last change and allowing Trevor Blevins to actually to be able to line match and yeah. you know get the Tkachuk line out right. against you know the number the top line of the the Stars and Dole Southgate and Bell and 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 that. Definitely paid a difference for them, but unfortunately, you're not going to win many hockey games. Yeah. You only score two goals in two games. Oh, for sure. But you know, it's it's funny you mentioned that because uh, as I was listening to the broadcast on Game Three, um, there was several times where uh, the broadcasters would be saying, "Well." You see Battleford send out these guys and Trevor Blevins is looking around on the bench as to who yeah. he wants. You know, there was multiple times they pointed it out. Yeah. And uh, so it's really interesting to to see that that was, you know, a bit of an advantage for them. And they took advantage of that advantage. Uh, just obviously, you know, when you're playing a team like Battleford's, it's such a tough opponent. Oh, that's why you, you know, that's why you compete throughout the regular Absolutely. season for home ice advantage, uh, to say the least. And congratulations. We have to say congratulations to the Balfords. North Stars, who are off to the SJHL final. They'll be competing for the Cantera Seeds Cup. And uh, we know what we do know about the SJHL final. Guess what, Clark? 
It'll start in Battleford. Game one and two. It'll start in North Battleford, game one and two. So we know that. Now, who they play? Mm -hmm. TBD. Uh, TBD. After uh, the two games between the Humboldt Broncos and the Flin Flon Bombers up at the Whitney Forum. Uh, in recap, let's start with game three and very, very similar uh, to game three between Melford and Battleford. It was a one nothing win for the Flin Flon Bombers. That one didn't go to double overtime, but uh, Harmon Laser Hume made uh, 40 saves in the shutout for the Flin Flon Bombers. And as a result, that gave Flin Flon a 3 nothing series lead. And then moving to Wednesday, uh, the Humboldt Broncos. You know what? This was a 1-1 hockey game on Wednesday going into the third period. Biggest 20 minutes of the season for the Humboldt Broncos on Wednesday. And they go out. They get three goals. Quick power play goal three and a half minutes in. Ethan Zilke gets the insurance marker. And then they get uh, the empty netter to keep their season alive. Of course, here's our look backs presented by Sask Lotteries as always. And so now as a result, this series continues. And it goes back to the EPA. But... Uh, you know, an, an interesting series. You know, I, I obviously I was in Melford for um, Melford and Battleford, but uh, you know, watching bits and pieces of Game Three, uh, it Humboldt definitely had their chances. They mm -hmm. definitely had their chances uh, to score in that that game. And once again, I mean, Harmon Laser Hume. I, I I know we have talked about it. Maybe I, I think it was last show we talked about how I think. Harmon Laser Hume in the first round kind of got overlooked because of how sensational Cam Hurdlicka was, even though he was having a great playoffs. And then the start of this postseason, or the start of this second round, I should say, he's been superb for the Flin Flon Bombers. Yeah, I mean, if you just even look at this week alone, I mean, there was 40 saves on Tuesday night for him and, uh, you know, 31 even, but he's been getting tested. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, he's been coming up huge. Uh, obviously, they've got three wins straight, which, you know, we were at game one uh, last week and that game was wild. You know, it started off, it, was, it got to a 4-1 lead for Flin Flon. Humble crawled back into it, clawed back into it, I should say. Um, and, I think that's kind of a theme throughout those, at least the first three games, I'll say, is that Humboldt wasn't out of those games. I know that, you know, they lost all three, but they, they've been they've been having their chances, like you said. Yeah, sure. um, and they, they had opportunities to do it, and Flin Flon found ways to win those first three games. And, right. um that's kind of been, I think, the theme of this one is that Flin Flon, both teams, I guess, have found a way to win the games that they've won, uh, and the other team was never at one point out of it, I don't think. Well, and I mean, the one nothing game, Alexei Silvestri scored the game winner, and it was midway through the third period. Yeah. And the thing is, Benjamin Motu played outstanding in that game, too. I, I mean, it really was um, a goaltending duel between that. I mean, all, both games on Tuesday... Yeah, we're goaltending duels. All four goaltenders played outstanding across the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. And then even last night, like you said, Harmon Laser Hume made 31 saves. But we got to talk about the other guy in the other for crease, sure. Benjamin Motu. He made 40 saves to help secure the win for the Humboldt Broncos and, you know, keep their season alive and force a game five back at the EPA. And, um, you know, I, I would definitely say when you look at this series, um, you know, Harmon Laser Hume's probably been the slightly better goaltender, but you know Benjamin Motu is, is still playing rock solid for Humble. Well, for an 18-year-old like he is to come in and um, you know, I saw clip after clip of him making huge saves up at the Whitney Forum on Twitter uh, the last few days. Uh, he's been doing great for them, and um, there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders right now. He's facing a really, really good opponent with some some veteran scorers. Like it's not it's not a team that uh, that <laughs> chanced their way to this point. They're a very good team on the other side, and for him to go in and and be able to you know, play as well as he has against guys like Jacob Vockler and Cole Dupereau. And even Alexi Silvestri has been having a great playoff so far in terms right. of production. And I, you know, I could go down the list in terms sure. of the names, but he's been playing extremely well and giving Humboldt a chance to win each and every night. And for an 18 year old, you know, future's bright for him. And I think Humboldt is probably pretty glad to see how he's been playing so far, you know, even thinking about going into the future and, and in the next couple of seasons. Well, and the other big thing in game four, which was a difference for the humble Broncos in picking up the win is the, they killed off five Flin Flon bomber power right. plays because we saw how, how well the power play was clicking for Flin Flon in games one and two. Yeah. Obviously it was just a one, nothing game in game three, but um, you know, to kill off five power plays and then you win the special teams battle. 
Mm -hmm. And we talked about it at the beginning of the series, how important special teams was going to be because in the regular season, these two teams had the, the one and two in power play. And I mean, humble had the best penalty kill. Yeah. But you know, in the first two games, Flynn Flon definitely found a way to, you know, take advantage of their power plays. Whereas now the last two games, Humboldt's number one ranked penalty kill in the regular season has, uh, you know, rebounded and done a really good job against this Bombers power play. And it paid dividends last night because Flynn Flon went over five on the power play and Humboldt, uh, they got the game winner on the man advantage. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it's crazy to, every year we talk about how, um, how good these matchups are going to be and how crucial special teams is. And it, it continues to prove itself every single time. The special teams in the playoffs is more often than not the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can capitalize on the power plays that you're get, you're going to get, because of course, when you get to the playoffs, you know, sometimes the referees put their whistles away. Things are getting called a little bit, not looser, but like, you know, some stuff you get away with here and there just because the refs don't want to obviously be the difference all the time. Uh, but when you do get on a power play, if you're able to capitalize or if you do have a penalty kill and you're able to shut it down, uh, that often more times than not is going to be the difference. And for, for Humboldt to do that uh, in game four, obviously when their backs were against the wall, obviously it's a huge time for that to be the case. Uh, it paid off for them divid in, uh, by di in dividends and um, obviously pushed the series to another game. So huge for them. Which is crazy to think about, but I don't know if you remember this, but last year's second round series between these two teams it played out the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Flynn Flon won both games in Humboldt. Flynn Flon won game three, won nothing. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. And then uh, it was Humboldt responding with a, a win in a you know winner go home game in game four. And then Flynn Flon won again, their third game at the EPA. Of course, Humboldt will be looking to try and... Uh, Rewrite a little bit of history yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow night at the EPA, 7.30 puck drop, but uh, and try and force a game six back to Flin Flon. And that's where it gets interesting, Clark, I think, as we start to now kind of preview game five between these two teams. Because obviously, if you're Flin Flon, obviously you get a second chance to close this out. Mm -hmm. um, but if Humble can win game five and, and go back to Flin Flon, I think that starts to plant a little bit of the seed of doubt, does it not? Absolutely. And I think, too, when you think about the longer this series goes. Oh, Battleford is just grinning from oh, ear to well, ear. Oh, that. <laughs> Grin ear to ear. There's that. Yeah, they want this to go as yeah, long as possible. Yeah, 100%. But do. you would have to think, and I, I don't want to, you know, paint any with a brush too much here, but mm -hmm. um, the longer the series goes, I think with the way the, the Flin Flon's injury situation is at the moment it you know the guys are coming back but you know the longer it goes i you wonder if humboldt might be able to like you said a plant a seed but b maybe the the war of attrition comes into play a little bit as well um just given the fact that some guys are maybe battling through some stuff right now and i know everybody probably is at this point of the season but um that comes into play a little bit in my mind but yeah like you said battlefords is just sitting there just being like okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh humble why didn't you keep winning a couple games you know the longer it goes um at this time of year every day off is is important right. and i think flin flon um taking this time to you know sit back and say you know what we need to we need to finish the series off well and i also think there will be some urgency too i think from from mike reagan and his team to come friday night because i think they'll recognize how important you know getting potentially a week off yes before the shl final mm -hmm. would be and yeah uh, so like for them I think game five, there will definitely be. So I think both teams will come out very urgent. And I think as a result, it's going to create a very, a very good hockey game. And then also the interesting part is that uh, with the history of these two teams in the playoffs is obviously Flynn Flon has had a lot of success at the EPA. Yeah. And maybe there's that seed of doubt that uh, for, Humble. for Humble too. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. It makes it interesting. Yeah. But there's a lot to be determined, obviously. Game five tomorrow night, Friday night, uh, 7.30 puck drop at the EPA. Of course, if the Humboldt Broncos can win game five at home, they will force a game six Sunday night up at the Whitney Forum. And if there is a game seven, it would be then back at the EPA on Tuesday. So... Still lots to be determined, uh, but yeah, right now there's three teams left.
competing for the Cantera Seats Cup and the Balfour North Stars, they have their ticket in the final. They know they're hosting game one and two. Yeah. They have made it to that last square on the bracket, if you want to call it that. I mean, sure. uh, they're, they're, they know where they're going to be. Uh, mm-hmm. Now it's just a matter of who's going to be there with Who them. they're going to play, get some rest, and all that fun stuff. Yep. But uh, that's kind of what's happening, I guess, in the last couple of days since uh, SJHL Weekly on Monday. Yeah. Um, we got to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors here at the SJHL for all the great support throughout uh, the season. Because, of course, without uh, their support, these shows would not be possible. Cantera Seeds, Sastel, Capital Auto Mall, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Chevrolet Tourism, Saskatchewan, Direct West, SGI, SGU, Great Western, Young's Equipment, RBC. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Of course, uh, UPL for sponsoring the 2023 SJHL postseason. Uh, another friendly reminder. I actually got an email this morning to uh, remind us the RBC Community Ambassador Award. Oh yeah. Tomorrow is the final day to vote. Let's go vote. So right now. Clark's going to go in and vote. It's as easy as this. Just go to sjhl.ca, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and you'll see the vote. For the RBC Community Amb- Ambassador, the vote ends tomorrow. And there's the five videos, the five options. And then we'll have a winner of the RBC Community yep. Ambassador. Done. Voted. You already voted. Voted. It was as easy as that. Super quick. And I know there's only today and tomorrow left to vote, but you, ha- you can vote once per day. So you could vote tomorrow too, Clark. I will. Anyways. I'll be sure to do that. RBC Community Ambassador... Uh, yeah, the uh, the vote ends tomorrow. Of course, Tylen Hill, big of the Kinders of Clippers. Uh, Ethan Zolke of the Humboldt Broncos. Jake Southgate of the Battlefords North Stars. Clay Sleva of the Yorkton Terriers. And uh, Jared Sitch of the Notre Dame Hounds are your finalists for the RBC Community Ambassador. Again, be sure to get your votes in. Voting ends tomorrow. tomorrow. Also known as Friday. So, Friday. very exciting. Very exciting stuff. Also, another thing we need to bring up, because uh, we get to give away a Polaris side-by-side Woo! in exactly three weeks, Clark. Three weeks. Uh, which is very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. A Polaris side-by-side giving it away in three weeks' time, uh, which means, my math is correct, I think that's only like 17 days left to get your tickets. Yes. April 23rd. April 23rd. April 23rd. Uh, April 23rd. Uh, of course, the Polaris side-by-side, sjhlraffle.ca. That's where you can find all of the information. Uh, one for 25, three for 60, 10 for 100 uh, to get your tickets today for a brand-new Polaris side-by-side. Clark's got his tickets already. Yep. Uh, he might be driving to work in it. Maybe he'll be taking your kids to school in it. I just hope the f- gosh dang weather can cool down, or not cool down, warm up a little bit. I was going to say settle down, but I got my words mixed up. Um, I think if you think it's bad down here, oh. you should see how much snow still left up in our with our friends up in northern Saskatchewan. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I was in, oh, obviously, I was in Melford Tuesday, Wednesday. I couldn't believe how much snow still there. Really? Even in Melford? That, that just, you know, it doesn't seem like that far away, but it it's just enough that it's I know. Lo- lots Seriously. of snow. So, anyways... SJHLRaffle.ca, get your tickets now. Uh, only 5,000 available. And, of course, we'll be doing uh, the draw for the Polaris side-by-side in three weeks' time at the Polaris dealership. Uh, yeah, and we'll get to... That's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Give away a brand-new side-by-side to somebody. Right in the dealership. We'll have to phone them on air. Oh, that'd be fun. Do we have that information that we could do that? Mm, I'll look into it. Just put it on speakerphone. <laughs> yeah, just dial them up. Put Hello, the speak- you've put the won a right side by up side to the microphone. <laughs> wow, who knows how the layout will be of the show? Yeah, that's that's for director Jordan to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm even more excited now. <laughs> this will be great. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes. So be sure to get your tickets today. Only two weeks left. Two two and change uh, to get your player side by side tickets left. So get your tickets today. S-J-H-L-Raffle.ca. Um, of course, there's still lots going on in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. There are only three teams remaining competing for the Cantera Seeds Cup. But that doesn't mean the content is stopping, so be sure to follow us across all of our social media platforms. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please and thank you. 
It's as easy as going onto YouTube, signing in with your Gmail email, Gmail email, I know, yeah, and just hitting subscribe, and it's free. That's all you got to do. Simple as that. We've seen um, a lot of growth in the playoffs on the YouTube page, so that's great. Uh, but that's where you can find all of our shows, highlights, uh, features. Um, what else? What else? What else? Sounds like we got a couple of cool stuff, cool things happening. You know, I'm I'm thinking a little bit of a, a head here, but some maybe some teasers uh, for some stuff that we might be doing down the road. You don't want to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just saying. I don't even know what you're talking about when it comes to teasers. So, I mean, it's a tease to me, too. I have no idea. Just be excited. I'm all. excited. Yep. I'm excited when I see the, the number of subscribers on the YouTube page. It's go, going. It's going, going up. up. So, uh, Where are we going? Higher. Higher. Uh, we're getting close to 1,000 subscribers, which Let's is get there. very exciting. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, that's where you'll also find... Our playoff road reports presented by our friends at SAS Melt pregame and postgame across all the social medias. Um, every game day, yours truly at a rink. You're doing a great job, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be in Humboldt tomorrow night. Say hi. Shout out to Matt Barrett for being camera operator while you were in Melford, by the way. Yeah, you know what? Shout out to friend of the show. Love saying, mm-hmm. loves when I say that. Yeah. Uh, friend of the show, Matt Barrett, for uh, being a great cameraman. Uh, for that, so I don't have to, you know, set up the tripod and everything like that. Does our friend Rory McGoran uh, give you help when? Uh, no, Rory. Unreal. No, he's That's too okay. much of a big shot. He's got to get up and get ready for his show in Humboldt. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, he's he's doing a great job too. I'm just kidding, Rory. We're giving you a hard time. You're doing a great job. <laughs> True. He is doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, no, I just I just set up my. It's a little trick. I'm going to be honest with you. Setting up the tripod and everything is a little tricky in Melfort mm. with how steep their steps are. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, if, we're get, if we're pulling the curtain back a little bit, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's actually very tricky to do behind uh, the scenes to do uh, to set up the tripod and film it properly in Melfort because of how the steepness of their steps in the arena. Mm-hmm. Anyways, nobody cares about go. that. Nobody cares. About I do. That. You do, but nobody else listening does, so that's okay. Uh, regardless, game five tomorrow night, going to be a great game between the Humboldt Broncos, Flynn Flon Bombers. If you are in the area, be sure uh, to get out to the EPA because that place is uh, going to be rocking. That's definitely going to be my game of the night. You know how all season long that we've been doing the Clark, what game are you looking forward to the most this weekend? That's mine. Game five, Friday night. That's my game of the, of the night on Friday. Wow. Because you know how I always have a hard time yeah, picking yeah, just yeah. one? Yeah. I'm definitely going to pick just one this time. I'd be worried if you didn't pick that. <laughs> uh, the other thing I do want to mention before we go, um, you know, we talked about the anniversary of uh, mm. the Humboldt crash today, but um, tomorrow is also uh, another big day. It's Green Shirt Day. Oh, yes. Uh, for organ donor awareness and registration to honor uh, the Logan Boulette effect. So, um if you're interested in becoming a, you know, an organ donor, uh, more information can be found. Green Shirt Day, um, it's changed lives. Absolutely, it's changed lives. So um, that family's done amazing work yeah. since. since yeah. everything So happened. be yeah. sure to, uh, if you're interested, you can go on Google and just type in Green Shirt Day, and uh, you'll find the right resources for you to potentially become uh, an organ donor. So. Uh, just want to mention that too before we go. Of course, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rocking rocking EPA tomorrow night. Game five, humble Broncos, Flynn Flon Bombers. You know the Bombers fans are gonna travel well. Uh, Broncos fans are gonna be allowed, and maybe we'll have a game six. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll have a game six. Maybe we'll have a game seven. Maybe we'll know uh, at the end of the day. We're gonna get some great hockey this weekend. Yeah. Whether it's one game, whether it's two, who knows. Anyways, uh, if you're in if you're in the Humboldt area, be sure to get out uh, to your local rink. If you can't make it out to the uh, Humboldt to catch the game, of course you can watch it on Hockey TV. Uh, great time to get your Hockey TV subscription, just because it is the playoffs. Just saying, you won't miss any of the games. Uh, but of course, if you can't get out in person, these the, this playoffs has been incredible. A lot of great games, a um, lot of great action, 
And uh, yeah, we only have three teams left competing for the Cantera Seeds Cup. So it's getting down to the nitty gritty. So if you can't get out to Humboldt, check out game five. If not, you can stay up to date with everything across the SJHL and the playoffs by following us across our social media platforms. So uh, it's going to be a great weekend of hockey, whether it's one game or two. And regardless, enjoy the games this weekend, everyone. And we'll talk to you next week.